So um, now we're going to get Anders to um, show his interface um, to the uh, SAM model. So I didn't really plan to do this, but um, I felt that it fit right in. Can I get a browser? So I will just flash the stock assessment.org interface that we have had some success with for the SAM model. And actually for other models also, you can put other models and there are other, other models in there. Uh, yeah, just a browser, then it's fine. Oh yeah. So this has been running for about 10 years, this stock assessment at all, and we have about 2,500 assessments on there. These are, of course, not different stocks, but many reruns of the same stock and all that. But it means that someone actually went in there and did an assessment. So. I'm pretty sure it works everywhere. I've fixed many bugs on my cell phone with this, so it works pretty much everywhere. So the front page is just this login and anyone can get a login. And if you don't have a login, you can log in as a guest and, and, um, and see that. So let's just see the stocks here. All stocks and show all of them. And you can scroll down if I can hit that here. And you can see all the different stocks that are there. And you can see some of them are old AD model builder programs. Some of them are SPICT, a continuous time survey uh, uh, pr production model. And many of them are SAM. And you can actually upload your custom model here if you want to and, and run it like that. So the stock that I thought we would look at. So yes, you can. If you just prepare sort of the simple input output files, then you can put it on. Um, let me find. So let's look at, let's see this one here. And the way that you work with it when you start a new stock is there is this data wizard here. And there you simply upload the files in the standard ISIS format, which is what we use because we work in ISIS and it's a CFS format, it might be called. Um, and those are text files and they, they have some advantages, but they also have some disadvantages. And once you read in every file, it's checked for consistency. And when you have all the files, they're just checked for cross consistency. So if you have catches, you also check that you have catch weights and things like that. Then at the end, I don't know how to get to that. Well, there is something in the way here. Um, can you <laughs> can you move that a little bit? Yeah, uh, Jeff, that's fine. Fine. Sorry, our needs are minimized. So here's step twelve. The 12th step, you can upload extra file that is only relevant to your assessment and not sort of in the standard domain. And then at the end, you, we, you can generate a default configuration. That's sort of a minimal configuration that could be a good first go in most cases. Then you can go and look at the configuration and proudly stored as a text file is the configuration. And you can go and change whatever you need to change here set up different configuration of uh, covariances and set up uh, coupling of different things and all that. And once you're happy with it, you can press the go button. I have a bug on the screen. <laughs> what? Where? Oh yeah, that bug. <laughs> then, then you can press go. And when you press go, it starts running. It starts running, but in this case, I think the assessment is already run, so it doesn't do anything. And that's one advantage of text files, because everything on this website is controlled by one big make file. And that keeps track of whenever a file has been updated. And make files are just a wonderful thing. And you see only text files. So if, 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 if you have a change to something, then the, let's just make a dummy change to this one file here. Then you can save the file, and once you have saved the file, 
then you can press go and then it will actually start to run the model because it knows that something changed that needs to, to then, that, that it then needs to rerun the model in order for stuff to be updated. And that's the make file keeping track of all that. So what you see when it's running, this was more important in the ADMB days, but you have something to entertain yourself while it's running. That's the negative log likelihood function and, and the blue one is the gradient on this, the log 10 axis here. So once it's run and produced all the graphs, now it's doing all the, all the graphic stuff. The model has finished running, as you can see. So it's doing uncertainty and, and, um, and graphs. And it should be done fairly soon. Then you can click here to see, you can click on the result page to see all the results. And here you would get standard graphs and tables. And once you have, then you can add forecast stuff. You can add leave out, you can add residuals, you can add the retrospective runs and things like that by clicking those extra buttons up there. But it of course takes a little time to run. Once you're, uh, and, and there are facilities to, to compare models because you can save a base model and then you can go and change the configuration and then you can run it and then you, they're compared on these graphs in the different model runs. So the main, the most important feature of all of this is of course the traceability. And the way that that is done is that on every graph, we have a small stamp at the bottom. I don't know if you can see the bottom, bottom of the graph here, there maybe. And this, this small number that's down here gives complete trace to everything from it was an empty editor. So you can trace who did what data point, who did what change to the code, who did what change to the software. Everything is completely traced in that, in that uh, number down here. And that's the main, main feature of this. There are many other features, for instance, that if there is a problem with an assessment, someone can write me or another person to get help and then they can log in and see what, what is actually going on instead of them sending some files and then something being different on your computer or a different version of this and that. So that's the, that's the main feature. And there is one more thing in the configuration that's actually neat. And that's, um, we have this facility to lock versions of software. So if you have certain packages you depend on, you can write any package there, then you can specify the, the code from GitHub and then you're locked in that version for, for this assessment. That's an extra um, thing. That was it. Yeah, thanks, Anders. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. I guess my question is about interface to ICs. Um, this seems to sit on a separate system, and this isn't on a IC server system. I mean, so can can TAF have a script to interact to control this, or how do you see relating to the IC system? And sort of related is, you know, in the U.S. at least, you know, having things uh, so that we're assured that we have a backup and. Uh, you know, having a gold standard somewhere is something that, you know, we need to worry about. And I'm wondering, you know, how do you maintain that? Do you have a mirror site or something like that to... So the server is back up, is, is backed up, is that the question? You know, well, I'm sure your server is backed up, mm -hmm. but is there, there an alternative? Is there something, you know, these are all IC's assessments. What, I, don't, I don't know the IC system well enough to know, you know, what their expectations are for maintaining their own copy of an assessment. Again, it gets back so, to how it relates so, to TAF. So I think the idea with TAF is that they are going to, to uh, extract results and things from this. And, and the, the setup is very similar with, in, in terms of the scripts, so they can harvest from the scripts also. But possibly Arne should answer that. Yeah, can I chime in? How it connects to that. Yeah. But I mean, it's, this... this uh, the, TAF was not thought of when we did this. Of course, yeah. of course. Is the sound on? Sorry. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Can you hear me, Mark? I think Jim had a question, but no, he's getting coffee instead. Okay. So um, thanks a lot, Anders. Okay. So. Um,